Hey everyone, I'm Matt Lang. I'm going to be showing you my top five favorite plugins for both creativity as well as mixing tricks. And we're going to be using a track that I created with Pro Mix Academy showing you how I built a track from scratch using some of these plugins. So this is probably no surprise to anybody who follows my work, but my favorite plugin basically ever is also my favorite reverb ever. It's made by Eventide. It's called Black Hole. And I've been using this thing, I mean, in so many forms, be it uh, hardware like my DSP 4000 or the pedals. And I mean, I have it in three different pedals. It's kind of ludicrous of my obsession with the sound. But it's honestly a quintessential part of my sound itself. And I'm going to be showing you how I like to use Black Hole. A more traditional way is like, let's just say I take this Rhodes piano. And it's just a chord. It's very simple. Pretty. It's simple. But even just dropping it on the channel and just using it basically as an insert. It just gives it a nice, beautiful lushness. But the other thing that I like to do with this is, this is where you start to abuse it a little. 100% wet. Now you have a giant pad. And the other thing I like doing a lot is using the freeze function to create a drone. So let's actually... Let's use a different instrument than the Rhodes. Let's, uh, let's take a guitar. And we have this guitar lick here. And that's already going through a, that has a black hole on ascent. But we're gonna create a drone out of this. And the way is, let's actually bust this guitar out to somewhere else, just so we have a, uh, a clean path. Let's take black hole. I'm gonna set it to be 100% wet. And then when I basically, hear the sound that I like, like the part of when the right notes are basically blurring together, then I'm going to hit the freeze button and it'll just create a pad, like an ultimate drone. And then I could layer that underneath something else and then write over that. It's a great inspirational tool. And then I could print this. So I, while it's frozen, I could just say, let's commit this to audio. Pro Tools trick that I love. And here's our drone. And then of course, if you, you know, let's say you pitch shift it down an octave. It's such a fantastic sound. And let's put black hole on it again to wash that drone out even further. That to me just sounds incredible. And I mean, that sound is literally created with Black Hole. It's just the most inspiring plugin to me. I just absolutely adore it. So my next favorite plugin is the Neural DSP Archetype Pliny. And I got into it pretty recently. It's just an absolutely phenomenal sounding uh, guitar amp simulator. And I love it for clean sounds. Like, and I love clean guitar sounds in general. And this one to me, it sounds very much like, truly like an amp, a lot more than other software emulations of amp sound. And I just, I really love it. What I love about it also, it's great for very like ethereal kind of, um, I like really spacey, almost like space rock kind of post rock kind of sounds. And the Pliny archetype is really phenomenal where, I mean, here's just a regular chord. It's really nice and clean. And what I love about it also is just built into the chain. It's pretty simple, but you have a compressor, which is a very clean compressor, and that's really helpful for me with clean sounds. And then aside from the amp itself, um, there are obviously quite a few things you could do with this. I mean, you could, I mean, they have presets that are pretty metal at times, because uh, Pliny himself is a pretty progressive player. So everything from clean sounds to... <laughs> So it can do that, but I really like it for clean sounds. Just for doing um, the ethereal stuff, it's fantastic. And it's got a really nice delay and a really nice reverb as well. And I mean, typically, I mean, in the actual track that I created with Promix Academy, I use a black hole after it. But for the sake of showing this plugin, the reverb itself within it is really quite good. And even, you know, let's do 100% wet. It sounds nice. 
And I have a nice ping pong delay that's modulating. It's modulating, uh, just, it's a quarter note that gets modulated. So without any of this stuff, my bass clean sound, let's even take off the compressor. Really clean and almost like fendery clean, which is a fender clean is my favorite kind of cleanup. I mean, I have a deluxe reverb behind me, but a lot of times I'm just using the plugin now because it's a lot easier and saves me a lot of time, especially when I'm just trying to write. So let's engage both the compressor, which now just fills out everything really nicely. It's clean. Add the delay. Let's even make wetter, more feedback. Really pretty. And now let's add our reverb to it. It's a great sounding plugin. Um, as a guitarist myself, I I always look for things that are going to inspire my playing and not just be purely technical. I want things that are creative. And yeah, the Plenty Archetype plugin for me is just, it's stellar. It sounds fantastic and it inspires me to play more and also inspires me to write. And ideally, that's all I could ask for from really any instrument, whether it's a guitar or a plugin. And this really does that for me. So in the track I created with Promix Academy, I use the Archetype Plenty for um, my main clean guitar sound. And here's just the DI without Archetype. And then with Archetype. It just sounds very fendery and chimey. And then because I'm me, and you're gonna notice a pattern here, then there's black hole all over it. The two things together, they're just absolutely, they're stunningly gorgeous. And that's why I'm equally inspired by, as well as Black Hole, like the Archetype Plenty plugin is just, it's phenomenal. If you like clean guitar sounds like I do, man, go for it. So my number three favorite plugin, it's the Empirical Labs Arouser, which was basically Empirical Labs, they're very well known for making the Distressor Compressor, of course, which is, to be honest, one of my favorite compressors ever. So it's no surprise really that the Arouser, which is basically a, it's very Distressor-esque, one of, it's probably my favorite compressor plugin in general. So what I'm going to do with it is I have it basically on both a snare drum as well as my uh, my drum bus for acoustic drums. And these drums came from the Get Good Drums library, uh, which is, they make phenomenal drum samples. So uh, these were not played live. These were totally input on, you know, with MIDI. Here's the drums without any compression at all. Now I'm going to start with the snare. And I put it on the snare first, and it's crushing it pretty hard. But again, it just, it sounds fantastic. So here's the snare without it. Here's with it. It just sounds a lot bigger. And one of the things I really like about the arouser in general you have the saturation circuit in it, which is great for me because I like to really slam things and then I tend to get a lot of clipping and I'll clip the output and all that kind of stuff. The saturation kind of saves me a lot because without any saturation, I'm redlining and uh, not necessarily in a good way. So as I bring up the saturation, you're going to see it just clip the, uh, it's going to clip the output a bit. So I'm not actually blowing out the Pro Tools channel, but I'm just going to clip the plugin. And that to me doesn't sound terrible. And right about there, we're clipping it hard enough that we're no longer clipping the actual channel. So, uh, and it's helpful. They have a nice little uh, little button right here that says "bad!" exclamation point clip. So helpful. Thanks, Empirical Labs. But I'm also going to use it now, also on the overall bus. And let's go back. Here is here's my bus without the compression.
Here's with it. And I have it in parallel. There's a nice mix function here. But um, what I like about it, it just makes the, uh, it makes the drums just breathe off each other a little bit more. And I always liked it when you kind of get some pumping in the hi-hats. Uh, it's not necessarily natural sounding, but I don't really care. I, I like it when things pump a bit. So we could even, you know, just hit it a bit harder and really get it to pump. It's just a great sounding compressor. Having a saturation circuit in it is fantastic. And then, of course, the mix knobs. So you can do parallel compression, which is are really handy on drums. That's, uh, it's great. And then, of course, you've got all the various uh, traditional empirical labs ratios, like rivet, which is essentially the nuke function on a distressor, which that's going to destroy the signal, just so you can hear it. Not parallel. We're totally going all in. Yeah, it just obliterates a signal in a very musical way. On drums, it's phenomenal. I use it on vocals all the time, too, actually, because it's a very versatile compressor. Also in this track, I'm using it on uh, my bass guitar. And this is a more uh, traditional use of it, of course. But And the bass is actually also going through the archetype plenty, just because that's what I decided to use, because it sounds great. But here is no compression. And here's with compression. And you can see I'm compressing it pretty hard. But now it's really bringing out that tail. And um, there is a bit of saturation that you can kind of hear the tail just saturate in a very pleasing way as well. And of course with bass guitar, I mean, I tend, I mean, this track is already, like a lot of it's very electronic. so. I, I need my acoustic elements to also be pretty heavily processed to fit within all the electronic elements itself. So some pretty heavy-handed compression. I mean, I'm using a 10 to 1 ratio. I'm gain reduction, it's 10 dB of gain reduction or more depending on when it hits. Like it's really, and there's saturation. Like this thing is really getting pretty crushed. The arouser sounds great. It just does it. And it's such a versatile compressor. It uh you know, it's one of those that I actually I get excited to use a compressor, which is something I usually don't say because compression to me is uh, I'm not enough of an engineer to get excited about that kind of stuff. So I get excited about how it sounds and it's musical, it's effective, and it's so versatile. So Empirical Labs Arouser, check it out. Awesome. Next up on my list of my top five favorite plugins is my favorite EQ, and that's Equilibrium by DMG Audio. It's incredibly powerful. It's probably the most surgical and versatile EQ I've ever used, and let's talk about why. So here I have it on our guitar pattern, and it's just uh, just cleaning up the low mids just a little bit. Without it, there's a lot of mud in there. So I'm using it, you know, in a pretty uh, pretty simple way, but what's great about it is every individual band, I can have a different kind of curve. So for instance, I could boost the high end. Uh, let's take this node. Which I, I want more air to the sound, but now I'm gonna change this band to, I want it to be the sound of an API 550 because I, I love the sound of the high end of a 550 and this is gonna be the same curve as that. And I'm boosting it by 16 dB, which is an obscene amount. And if I take it off, then I miss it. It's not harsh at all. It's just beautiful. And sure, there is some, uh, some upper mid-range issues here. So I can just easily scoop those out. And if I want it to be more analog-y, if you will, I could choose a different curve. And let's say I take uh, 4KE Black, which presumably would be an SSL console. And now, I mean, look at how the, the, the curve changes dramatically into a much more open cue. And we're ultimately going to have to tighten that because I don't want to you know, make this thing too anemic. But here's what it sounds like now.
it's just a very, very musical sounding EQ, and it's so surgical. I mean, you, if you find resonances that you find really annoying, you can literally take the slimmest band ever, and you can notch that out, which is something I do all the time if I need to. But it's a great sounding EQ. I'm using it also over, on my overall guitar bus. And again, it's just doing a little bit more of um, just taking out like a little bit more of the low mids. And then that frequency I really just took out earlier. Um, it's doing a little bit in the bus also. I have another guitar here, and this is layered under it. And it's basically, uh, it's a similar thing. It's a similar pattern, but it's reversed. And for this, I'm doing a much more dramatic EQ job because I want this thing just to sit behind the original guitar line and I don't want it to actually interfere with it, but I want it to be super wide and super stereo, whereas the other is pretty, it's pretty in the center. So another thing I'm doing here is I'm taking out all of the, like the lower mids and I'm doing that with, again, the, uh, the black version of an SSL. Without it. That's gonna fight entirely with the other guitar part. And then once again, I'm boosting the high end with the 550 style high end. So now when I play it with the other guitar, they don't fight each other at all. It's just like the reversed part is kind of hugging the center of the main guitar line. And yeah, this EQ, I just, I love it. It's very easy to use. It's extremely versatile and it sounds fantastic. So that's why DMG Audio Equilibrium is my favorite EQ. Number five in my top five favorite plugins, but certainly not my least favorite by any means. It's only because it happens to be the last in my chain. This is Elevate by Newfangled Audio. Elevate is honestly the most incredible limiter I've ever used ever. Uh, Dan Gillespie, who created it, he used to be the senior DSP developer at Eventide, created Newfangled Audio, his own brand, and they're still, uh, they're still distributed by Eventide. But it's, it blew my mind the first time I ever used it. I've never found a compressor that, or a limiter, I should say, that allows me to get as loud as it while also being so musical sounding, not distorting the signal too much, but you definitely can if you want to. But it's got so much control. And so I'm going to show you two different ways I use it. The first is I just have it kind of um, on my master. I mean, this track is, of course, not mastered or anything like that. But um, just to have it at the very end of the chain, just to bring me up if I want to send this out. This is a track that I'll ultimately probably turn into a song that of my own. I'm going to need vocals and all that. But for now, this is uh, how I'm using it on the master. And clearly I need to update the plugin, but I have not because I never update anything. But we're just going to take this section at the end, which is pretty full on. And here is without Elevate. with it. So it gets things loud, that's obvious, but let's talk about what it's actually doing and what makes it so cool. One of the things that makes this limiter so incredible is that it is not a single channel or a single band limiter. This is, I'm using the maximum of 26 bands, which means each of these 26 bands, and if we look, uh, let's look at the filter bank, so this is going to show the frequencies. Uh, and these are all, uh, it's under the melodic mode or mel spacing. And these are frequencies that uh, were designed by Newfangled Audio to be particularly musical. But you can also, you can move the frequencies to be whatever you want and you create, you know, your own multiband limiting. But I'm going to hit it and you're going to see, especially in the low end, that's where you're going to see more variation. But each of these individual frequencies is all being limited at a slightly different amount. And you can see, for instance, like let's look at 102 right there. That's getting hit a little bit harder than say the stuff up at the top. And it's not that drastic because uh, my mix happens to be pretty even, imagine that. But it really, uh, it really just evens everything out really nicely. And on top of it, when this is where uh, the other parts are gonna be kind of fun, is there is a uh, there's a transient designer built in, and I always use a little bit on a mix because without it, it gets a little squashy. So let's turn the gain all the way back up, and then I'm going to uh, show you the difference of the emphasis versus no emphasis. So here's no emphasis at all. It 
gets really spiky at that point. And I, uh, I don't really, I wouldn't push it that hard on a mix itself. But once again, it's doing it across all 26 bands. So it's going to be actually applying that kind of transient design to each individual band, which is incredibly powerful. And so it has adaptive transient mode right here. And what that's going to mean is it's in single band. It's going to apply the same amount of transient design to every band. I had it at 50%, so it's not super hard. You put it at multi-band, and then all the various frequencies will be hit differently. And it's a really effective way to keep a lot of emphasis, a lot of punch, without really losing any level. For my taste, I tend to keep that around 50, and I tend to keep the, uh, the amount of emphasis about 39%. But that's what I do. And there's also a clipping section, which I use all the time, but not on my master bus, and this is how I do it. So for instance, I used it actually to make this sub drop. And so I had this modular sub drop. I made it on the modular synth right behind me. It sounded like this. Which sounds big, but I can make it a lot bigger. And I'm gonna be doing that using only Elevate. This is where the drive comes into hand. So first, I'm driving the whole thing, um, and my input is 10 dB, which is a lot of gain. So without any drive, I mean, it literally shook my walls, which is a good thing in my eyes. But let's go to the drive section. And this is fun because not only can you do a lot of, uh, you can clip it, but you can also actually change the curve of the clipping. So say I bring it up to, let's say 5 dB of clipping. It's a lot heavier and I could actually change the clipping shape from, I'm a soft clipper right now, I can go hard, really drive it. And because that's going straight into the limiter, I'm not actually like, I'm not killing the signal, it's just really loud and really distorted. And that's really effective for this kind of impact. So if I back it off back to say, I was doing 5 dB of gain or 5 dB of drive, Let's just print it. My sub drop that already was pretty, pretty decent now is this absolute monster of a sub. And the way I used it in the track is I have it alternating basically with, uh, well, it hits with a kick, but it hits underneath a kick. So I have a regular kick. And then this is right underneath it, and it sounds absolutely huge. And then I just cut it. But yeah. This is all just created with newfangled audio Elevate. And I use it all the time on snares, especially when I'm just designing percussion in general where I really want to blow it out. And even on snaps, a great trick I found is take a stereo snap and just run it through this, drive it, clip it, and then you get such a wide, such in your face kind of snap sound that it would take a lot more work using really a chain of multiple plugins to be able to do what this does just honestly in, in seconds. So Newfangled Audio Elevate, it's, it's the best limiter I've ever used, and I'm, I'm blown away by it. It's really incredible. Those are my top five plugins, and thanks for checking it out. If you want to see more of this, you can check out my course that I created with Promex Academy, where I created this track entirely from scratch, and I'm using all these plugins and many more, and you'll get an insight into my production workflow, my thought process, and all the above. So the links for that are below in the description. Check it out if you want, and go have fun. Use some plugins. Everything in here, they're all made by fantastic people. So support these incredible developers and check out their work. <music>